What is up, everybody? I am Mega Short Fuse, and uh, this is Super Monday Night Combat. And since I don't really have a topic picked out for this, I am gonna go over a few. First and foremost, um, should I apologize for not being as active as of late? Um, sort of, yes. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I'm not bringing you content that is actually ready, but I have been swamped with schoolwork, so that's it. That's the only apology you're gonna get. I apologize. Now, moving on. Uh, what do I think of this game? Let's let's start with that. Uh, Super Mario Night Combat is quite fun. This is the very first game I played. Uh, well, the only game I really played because it didn't work for two two straight days, and now it does. So um, kudos to well the gods of whoever the fuck makes servers because <laughs> it now works. Um, but yeah, it's 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 fun. It's definitely challenging. We lost. We got our ass handed asses handed to us. I think that. I played semi-intelligently, but you you be the judge. I, I have no fucking idea. I'm uh, I'm a noob at this, and I am eagerly awaiting Excalizor's take on, uh, well, this game once he eventually starts playing it, which I know he will. But this is a very, uh, very fun third-person shooter. It was originally Monday Night Combat on XBLA. I don't think it was on PSN, or it may have been. I don't know. But it definitely was on Steam, and... Um, didn't play it, didn't have a decent PC back then, I'm sorry. Um, however, this is, uh, as I've said, quite challenging, quite fun. It's sort of a third-person shooter League of Legends, if you can get behind that. It's an arena shooter, You there's bots, bots push lanes, lanes contain towers, there's champions, or pros in this case, and you get different classes, perks, even weapons, I think. It's like Team Fortress on cocaine when it comes to customization. So, yeah, in that respect, this game is, is quite fun. It is uh, very fun. It's, I think it's going to be fun to get into. Um, we have yet to see and decide. Again, I am very unskilled at this, I think. I don't know. Um, moving on. Free-to-play gaming. I kind of want to talk about free-to-play gaming because I think it's it's a very nice fad that it's uh, it's taking over the market as is. Because big there's basically big-budget releases and PC is uh, sort of... The breeding ground for the revi the <clears throat> sorry revitalization of the indie genre as a whole, and um, in that respect, I I think it's a pretty awesome trend. I mean, for one, we get free content, and it can and can't be good. You know, there's a balance of good and bad titles. I can't name bad titles, but hey, for for the sake of fairness, there are bad titles, but there are like awesome ones. Um, <clears throat> Like, sorry, I'm, my thoughts are all over the place. I haven't done a commentary in quite a while. Apologize. Uh, League of Legends. League of Legends is awesome. I blow dick at that too. But um, what else? This. This just came out. Um, Blacklight Retribution, which is also very, very free to play. Need for Speed Online, which is kind of a sucky game, but eh, haven't played it. <laughs> Can't have an opinion if I haven't played it. But, eh. And this is a... I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not gonna digress, just the horrendous failure of me trying to jump on that ledge for like 10 fucking minutes straight. But, um, free-to-play gaming is a nice trend, nice enough. I mean, if you get a bad game, you don't really pay anything. And the incentive is really there for people who get into it to actually spend money on skins, games, the like. Games, bullcrap. Uh, weapons, perks, that sort of thing. Um... Now the real meat and potatoes of what I wanted to talk about. What if, imagine this following scenario, what if God 4 never took off? Just, just, just imagine that. Imagine it for a second. Where would we be if God 4 didn't ever take off? Th that was just something that came to mind when um, I was going to school today, actually. That doesn't really matter. The scenario isn't really important. What is important is the topic. Um, and I started thinking about this. Would... The gaming market and just the the whole scene as as it be, would it be any different? First things first, would a gameplay commentary ever taken off? Yes. Machinima.com was already established. It was already there way before Call of Duty. Like, I think the company itself was established sometime in the beginning of this century, believe it or not. But yeah, Machinima would have still been there. Halo Machinima was already a big thing, so it would have naturally progressed into gameplay commentary. But um, as far as the commentary scene getting as big, there, there, I think there's always going to be this one game that every everybody plays, like um, Halo. Halo 3 was the big dog on the scene before 
um, COD 4 actually destroyed the charts. And here, collision, collision detection is an issue. <laughs> or depth perception or whatever. Sorry. Again, digressing. But, yeah, it, it, I don't think it would have taken off quite as fast as it would have. But it would have been very different in that it, I think it would contain more games. And that um, since there, the Juggernaut was Halo, Halo was console exclusive, it would probably see a move towards, um, I don't know, more diversity. Like, now people are breaking off, but the biggest names are still Call of Duty, and it's Call of Duty-centric, this gameplay commentary thing, it, isn't it? It really is centered around Call of Duty. So, my guess, still a big game, but a lot more variety and a lot more views on variety. Um, as far as gaming as a whole... I think that um, th there's always going to be a trend, right? Before, remember way, way back in the day when Halo was a big dog. Again, citing back to that. Um, space shooters were all the rage. Everybody wanted to make a sci-fi shooter. Everybody just wanted to take a piece of that pie. But uh, COD came along and all of a sudden, gray, drab, boring environments were the way to go. So whoop you fucking do Still, there would have always been a trend, but as big as Call of Duty is, I don't think trends would have stayed trends for that long. I, I think there would have been more of a shift in, um, in general genres. I think more genres would have been more prevalent. Same thing as the gameplay commentary thing. More things in abundance instead of a focus on gray shooters. That's personal opinion driven by years of disappointment. But yeah, I, I think gaming would have been really... Not really different, per se, but just different enough so that it wouldn't be as, dare I say, stale as it is now. Think about it. I, I, I've I noticed that uh, not a lot of hype gets behind games that are not as well known, whereas in the past, that was all rage, you know? What was the new thing we can go after? What's the, hell, I don't know, Jack and Dex or Ratchet and Clank, um, Prince of Persia even, thing that we can go after and that we can, you know... Um, fawn over be infatuated with that was more prevalent in the past now we just look forward to the biggest release because we we grew up on those games didn't we i mean chances are if you're watching this you grew up on you grew up in basically the same age range that i'm in i'm 18 so you know the 90s or the 2000s who am i kidding i wasn't conscious through most of the 90s because of all the alcohol i drank when i was seven years old but um digressing from that it, it really would have been uh, different. I don't know if the trend of unique games getting more praise would have continued, but it would have definitely would have definitely been more unique, I'd like to think. I think it would have definitely been more focused on innovation. Um, let me give you an example. Now, Lollipop Chainsaw is coming in, or rather coming out in June. That game is going to rock. I'm going to buy it. And it's going to be amazing. How many of you actually know what it's going to entail? I'm pretty sure a lot of you do, which is strange, because I picked a bad example, didn't I? Damn it. Um, okay, let's let's jump back two years. I can give a definite example of this. Enslaved Odyssey to the West. I'm doing a playthrough. You guys know I'm doing a playthrough. But how many of you had heard of Enslaved prior to the play playthrough? Ugh. Mixing up my vowels. Yeah. That's an obscure game if I've ever thought of one in recent memory. Vanquish. Vanquish is another one. And that that sold like crap. <laughs> that got dick all for media. Actually, that got dick all for gamer attention. But it got, got a lot of praise just because of how insane it was. Uh, no more heroes. <sighs> that Those are the ones that come to mind immediately. But, um, yeah. Those got buried under Modern Warfare 2 and big shooty-shooty releases, as it were. And that's a damn shame. Because those are great games, and sadly we are seeing sort of a stagnation. But if COD wasn't around, if COD wasn't the juggernaut that it was, eh, still a dominant franchise, but not as dominant as this. Because COD really pushed gaming into sort of a more casual um, direction, into a more casual audience's... How should I say? Percep not perception, fucking... um. <laughs> You know what I mean. Into there, it it demanded attention with how popular it was. Hell, I bought Modern Warfare 2, and I hadn't played a shooter before in 
you know, as much in my life. So that's a testament to the power of Call of Duty, just the the amazing power of Call of Duty. But um, digressing from that, I I really rambled on about nothing in particular when it came to Call of Duty and the state of gaming in general. I don't know. We're seeing a shift towards the positive. I mean, Kingdoms of Amalur are so like insane, considering how considering its um, prospects of success. It sold fucking insane. Number one in February. Well, February was a dry month, wasn't it? <laughs> Never mind. Beginning of the year is always dry. I don't know why developers are so infatuated with pushing games into the holiday season. Because it's, it's gotten so insane with the holiday season game that um, nothing comes out, does it? Just nothing. Mass Effect 3 came out last month. Prototype 2 comes out, what, next week? That's one big release a month. That's good. How many of you are buying Prototype 2? How, how many of you bought Mass Effect 3 just because there was nothing else coming out? <laughs> Weird. I mean, I, I have an example of games that... A game, one, <laughs> that actually succeeded because it came out at an appropriate time. Borderlands. Borderlands sold, what, 5 million copies just because it came out in September. You know what came out that holiday season? Fucking Modern Warfare 2. Again, harking back to that. Borderlands saw its success because it picked its launch window. Plain and simple. I don't know why why no one has caught on to this, but what do we have this holiday season? Think about it. Whatever the fuck's coming on the Call of Duty side, I think it's Black Ops 2. I, I know it's Black Ops 2. It's the worst kept secret in the world right now. Assassin's Creed 3. <laughs> that, those are enough. I think those, that's enough of an example to prove that no one has still learned their lesson. I mean, those are... Those are pretty high-profile games, but... You can bet your ass something's gonna get buried under the avalanche of crap that's gonna come out, like, what, November 15th? Or think back to last year. Everything came out in the week of November 15th. All well, November 15th alone, Ubisoft buried Rayman Origins, so... I don't know why. <laughs> I'm rambling now, I apologize. But yeah, um... Wow, it's it's weird. Oh, one more thing, before I forget. Um, some longtime fans of this channel... All three of you, I know, I know, I know who you are. May remember that I started doing a playthrough of Dead Mo the Dead Money DLC, and I know I've swamped you guys under playthroughs, but I'm trying to streamline those, I really am. Um, shorter games, I think I'm gonna go the the run route of putting up just one humongous or two humongous videos, but um, that's what I want to talk about. What I want to talk about is um, Dead Money. Instead of swamping you with the eight hours remaining from the fucking game, I'm just going to edit it down into a very digestible, what, 13 to 15 minute clip. No promises on the length, but somewhere among those lines. And it's going to be uh, a clip show. You guys love them clip shows, and I love to make them, because it's funny. Do be warned, it the audio quality is quite terrible, but yeah. Let me know if I should do a live comm session of this. I am desperate to be better at this, as you just now saw. So, thanks for watching. Um, leave your comments on the topics I maybe discuss here, I don't know. And I will see you possibly more frequently. Bye, guys.